Hey, how's it going, A? Thanks for dropping by. And that is all the time we have for Chit Chat because this is actually going to be a short video. And yes, I can hear you scoffing, but my intention is to keep it short. So the topic for today is defeating the forces of progress. So as you can tell, it's only going to take a few minutes. Now, as I'm sure you're aware that when you're doing any sort of electronics project, the first thing to do is put it on a breadboard, as obviously I've done here with this button and resistor yeah no this isn't part of it it's a prop people i just uh, i don't have anything going on on this so um yeah you've got to breadboard your projects first otherwise chances are they're not going to work right we all know that but now it seems like you can't get the parts that fit on breadboards anymore there's so many surface mount products that don't even come with a, you know, a regular pinned uh, equivalent. So what do you do then, right? You, you still need to somehow mock it up. What are you gonna do? Now, I know there are those little adapter boards that you can buy, and I would show you one right here in my hand right now, but I don't have any of them. I've never bought any of them. So that's not uh, gonna happen. And what they are is just a little, uh, you know, standard, pin pad thing and then there's breakouts with little pins that fit on the breadboard so you can slam it in there and work with it we're not doing that today there's a better way well i shouldn't say better way. there is another way of doing this and that's what we're going to do today so step one is to get your part and uh today we're going to pick this one here which is an ic supervisor and that is it there. Obviously, that is not going to work on this. <laughs> you might be able to jam it in one of the holes, but that's about as far as you're going to go. So this has five pins. Can you see that? Shit, no. How am I going to show this to you? It's super stupid small. Uh, come on, baby. Where is it? This is not going to happen, is it? Uh, there it is. Okay, so yeah, we've got five pins there. And uh, the first step is to wire it up. Uh, it sounds crazy, but it's not that hard. So let's do it. So to make things easier on yourself, you're going to want some of this 28 gauge wire. It's uh, mighty thin and perfect for this application. You could probably do it with something else, but you know, it's going to be more hassle. So 28 gauge wire. Now you probably already have one of these, but these alligator clips are way too big, so we're going to make a big alligator clip eat a little alligator clip, like so. Come on, grab it. And then you can gently place your part in the jaws of the alligator. Oh, fuck. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. That is a hazard for sure just like that and I don't know if you can see that we're gonna zoom in and see what happens this thing is an IC supervisor not that it really matters for this but in case you're interested what it does is uh, it monitors the voltage of a particular application and then if the voltage drops too much I think it'll send a reset signal through one of the pins and that you can you know, basically shut off your microcontroller based on that or something like that. I'd have to look at the data sheet exactly. But I do know that we do need pins one, two, and five to make this work. So there's one, two, and then five is around the other side over here. So we're going to put wires on that. One is positive, two is negative, and five is signal. So let's do it. Okay, we're going to just do a dribble of flux on there. And then we're going to tin the tip of our wire. So where are you? Oh my God, it's everything so tiny. There, just like that. And then you just have to carefully go in and just tap it to the pin. I'll see if I can do this. Just like that. Oh! Seemed like it was going to work. Hard to do with this freaking camera in front of me. I think I got it there. Looks like it, yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, that's what you got to do. And just do it for the rest of them. Come in there and do this, come on. 
and you, you just got to tap it and get the hell out because oh, too much heat will melt your other one. So, yeah. All right. That's it. Wired up. It's not that hateful. You can do it. So that's what you've got. This is still basically useless. You can't, these wires are so fragile. You'd never be able to do anything with that. So you gotta reinforce it somehow. And normally I would employ the use of my 3D printer, but today I thought, no, most people don't have a 3D printer. So that's not really fair. So we're gonna use this, a washer. You can probably dig one of these up. And to be fair, I've not done this before. I don't know that it exactly works, but uh, let's try. Okay, so we've got a piece of packing tape here and if memory serves, uh, epoxy doesn't stick to masking tape. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I think that's right. Um, so once you've got that down, so I've just taped it to the back of the, the washer there and we're just going to gently, gently, gently bend these like, kind of like that. And like that. I think that's gonna fit, let's try. Actually, you know what? This is actually might be better than what I'm doing. Except you end up with a giant washer stuck to your thing. But no matter. I think you get where I'm going with this by, by now, but you're probably sticking around to see if it works, eh? Yeah, because maybe you could just stick that right to the tape. Hold her down. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And it's out of focus. But there you go. There you see it. Okay. That's all you need to do, I think. And uh, don't disturb the order of things here. Uh, some uh, clear epoxy is what you need. Well, I don't care what brand you use, doesn't really matter. You'll wanna weigh out exactly five mils of each one of your components. So there you go there. I think that's gonna be enough. And there we go. Exactly right. Don't ask me how I can do it. Okay, and now the fun part. Just take your glue, drop it in. I'm hoping I can pop this out of the washer afterwards, but mm, I don't know. Not confident that's gonna actually work. So we'd be stuck with it in the washer. Now it looks a little cloudy now, but that uh, might clear up and you'll be able to see your part in there, but you know what? It's not gonna matter anyway. Oh. Since I have a heat gun, I'm just going to hit it with a little heat. Sometimes that uh, will burst the bubbles and you can see them popping in there, that's good. So that, that'll clear up the epoxy a bit. Got a nice meniscus going on there. Serious surface tension. Okay, don't go overboard, man. All right, we'll let her cure and uh, then see what happens. Yeah, five minute epoxy, my arse. Takes longer than that, maybe an hour before it's like nicely cured or reasonably cured. Anyway, just peel the back off of this and see what we got left. Uh, yeah, I don't feel like that's gonna pop out at all. I wonder if we froze this, if it might. Hmm, I don't know. Actually, still feels kind of soft. It's not tacky at all, but it just feels like it's uh, yeah, a bit soft. Anyway, perfectly usable as it is, or let's, uh, let's put it in the freezer and see if it won't just uh, 
contract and expand so that it just pops out of there. That would be kind of cool. Well, I'm pretty sure this ain't gonna work, but we'll give it a try anyway. So it's been cold, now it's gonna get hot. Don't think it's actually gonna release from there, but uh, who knows? Might get a surprise. Come on out, little guy. Well, it's bending, but there's too much, uh, too much flexion in the epoxy to make that happen, I guess. So we're stuck with it on the washer, which is just fine by me. Now you want to sacrifice a few double-ended pokey bits. Attach the wires in whatever unholy manner you feel is appropriate here. I'm using solder. And that's all there is to it. Uh, instead of staring out the window longingly waiting for the mailman to bring you your adapter boards, you can actually get on with the job of prototyping. All within a couple of hours. So stop wasting your time and money and just do this. Easy, fast, fun. What's not the like? And depending on how good your memory is, you might want to stick a label on the back. And because you can actually see your part here, just mark where pin one is. And then all you need to do is look up the data sheet and that should get you going. So I've used that technique for a bunch of different projects with different parts and uh, always works out really well. As long as you can solder a wire to it, you should be okay. And uh, it saves you the hassle of ordering, you know, those adapter boards and saves the expense and the time. And yeah, I don't know, <laughs> there's not much downside as far as I can see. Hopefully you found this a little bit useful, interesting, whatever. And if you've got some other way of uh, doing this, let me know. I'm always interested in how people are hacking the system. So yeah, leave a comment below if you do. Otherwise, we're probably way over time already, so we'll call it quits. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Otherwise, we're probably way over time already, so we'll call it quits. Thanks for watching. Cheers.